Willie and Rose on As the World Turns. Martha Burr. And the Emmy goes to Martha Byrne. This is Martha Byrne's first win and first nomination in this category. She began playing the role of Willie Walsh Snyder on As the World Turns in 1985. In 1987, Martha previously won the Emmy for Outstanding Younger Actress. I cannot believe I'm standing up here right now. I'm very nervous. Excuse me. Uh, Chris Goutman, I would not be standing here without your belief in me and your leadership and your friendship. Thank you. Hogan Sheffer, Leah Lehman, Carolyn Cullerton, all our Emmy Award winning writing team. Thank you. Our directors. Oh, amazing, amazing crew out in Brooklyn. The best people you could ever work with. Absolutely the best. Lisa Brown. Elizabeth Hubbard, Tony Masante, John Hensley, thank you for 15 years of sexual tension. <sighs> Paul Layden, my new best friend on As the World Turns, thank you. Oh God, my husband and my son, I love you guys so much. You're the best. My last thing I want to say is I dedicate this to my parents. <sighs> Without everything that you sacrificed for me, so a little girl came to you at nine years old and said, I want to be on Broadway, and you just said, let's go. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your love and support. This is for you and everybody in New York and in Brooklyn Studios. Well, let's party! Well, well, well. Look who decided to show our beautiful face. My face. My face, which you used to steal my life. Who's calling who a thief? Where's my diamond, girlfriend? There's only one criminal here, and it's you. Hey, it's a bail jumper. How you doing, sweetheart? Huh? You checking back in? We got your suite all reserved for you. Where'd they find you anyway? Were you at the bus terminal? Oh, I was at your house, Shanks. Emptying the bullets out of your gun. <laughs> Is that a trick? How'd you do that? Your lips don't even move. And yours are moving faster than your brain, Bob. Hold it. Which one is the real one? I am. I am. There's only one Lily. One real Lily, and it's me. There's only one double-crossing Rose. Oh, I'm the double-crosser. I'm not the one who ran off. Ran off of my husband and my kids. You should be grateful to me. Grateful? Grateful? What have you done for me lately besides sleep with my husband? He didn't object. I hate to tell you. Hey, come on, both of you. Do we need to do this for Unfortunately, Rose is telling you like it is about one thing you wanted to sleep with her. Didn't you? And you're here, why? Because your feelings for him are as pure as the driven snow? Come on, guys. It, it, there's no need to air more dirty linen in public, is there? Come on. My bloomers are clean. Oh, now when I put a big foot foot on the back of them, sending your bail jumping butt back to New Jersey. You give me any more, let me give you a fat one. Uh, ladies, can we keep it down? We're disturbing the felons. Let's go outside. No, no, let's do it right here. Or did you get enough of the spotlight last night? You had completely embarrassed yourself. That makes two of us. Hey, hey, stop, both of you, stop, please. Officer Shanks, is there some room here where the ladies could talk in private? Well, the interrogation room's not being used, there? but... Fine, come on, go. Sweetheart, please. Be careful. Now try to keep your voices down. Don't count on it. You actually slept with Holden. I don't believe this. You jump into my life. I trusted you. You were my friend. Yeah, that's us. Soulmates, right? Believe it or not, I was actually worried about what happened to you. Oh, yeah, right. You're on your little island paradise. You come up for air from a little midnight swim with a sexy Simon. You have a pang of conscience. You say, oh, I wonder what happened to my good friend Rose. And Simon says, who? It wasn't like that. We fought for our lives every single day. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. The kind of fight us girls like to lose. You know, you're disgusting. You completely betray me, but you pretend not to know it. I did exactly what you told me to do. I came up to here to Nowhere USA because you said if anything happened to us, if we ever got separated, this is where I would be safe. 
We meet up again and everything would be straightened out, but you got lost in the outback. No, we never, not even once. No. Well, maybe that's why you're so steamed. You don't understand anything. This all happened because of you. What's the matter, Diamond Lil? You got too much time on your hands? You're so bored, you gotta search the internet for clues from your past. Your present is too, what, too luxurious? Too comfy? Me, I'm so stupid. I'm sick around for weeks trying to keep it together for you. I was so scared and you never showed up. It was a little difficult for me to keep my appointments with Celia's 9mm pointed at my head. Listen to the mouth on you. Picked up a lot of gun lingo hanging out with the guy who taught you how to be a jewel thief. I never took your stinking dime and you say it another time, I will rip your throat out. Well, then where is it? It's lost. Lost. Just like the life that you stole from me and I will never, ever forgive you. My diamond is lost. Could you define that for me? Is it, is it lost like you lost a couple of pounds? Or uh, lost like you left your kids at the supermarket? Or lost like you lost some money at the, at the racetrack? Or lost like you lost your mind? What? Actually, it's all your fault. Why? Because I put it in your pocket for safekeeping? No, the problem is you forgot to tell me. We were being shot at, remember? Yes. No, I don't remember. The last thing I remember are the lights going on. Then my lights went out. I was hit with a sandbag. I passed out. I was unconscious. Simon picked me up and took me out of there. He saved my life. What a hero. He didn't even know which one I was until I woke up later on that day and I was delirious and Simon was taking care of me. And I bet he was. Oh. Sex. 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 Is that all you think about? No, no, no. All I'm thinking about is my diamond cookie. Couldn't you put your hands in your pocket? Once in a while, just see if you had it. You could have called me to tell me. I was in the middle of the Canadian wilderness. There wasn't a telephone around. I looked everywhere. When I finally found a phone, I picked it up to call. And Celia, Celia, she cut the phone lines. Oh, that's Celia. She's quite resourceful, isn't she? It's more than I can say for you. <sighs> what are you complaining about? You were already back here impersonating me. Academy of Wartime, right? Yeah, that's right. And I was a lot better at it than you. I was more you than you could ever be. Ask anybody. I was being shot at. All I wanted to do was get out of AC and hold him with my ticket out. Always looking out for number one, right, Rose? No, you! Believe it or not, I figured we'd be back in Oakdale and we could clear everything up. You could tell Holden about me and the Rose of Sharon and Simon and Celia. I get my diamond back. We're even, fair and square. Don't talk to me about fairness and squareness. You fell in love with Holden. Not at first. But then you left that message on the answering machine. What message? I'm with Simon now. Bye. Oh, no. Five little words. But the message was loud and clear. But I never said goodbye. I never said those words. Celia, I just told you she cut the phone lines. That's your story, isn't it? Then she kidnapped me. That's why you never called me back? You don't believe me? The one part I do believe is that my diamond is missing. The rest sounds like a bad novel to me. What would you do if you were me, pretending to be you? I would have taken those dollar signs out of my eyes and I would have looked around. Why? Why would I leave my children and my incredible, incredible husband? If I were that insane, do you think that I would spend the time to give me the message, a five-word message on an answer machine? Rose, doesn't this seem a little odd to you? How am I supposed to know what you would do? I'm a dancer, I'm not a mind reader. It doesn't take a crystal ball to realize that I would never, ever do that to my family. I thought you knew that about me. I thought you knew what kind of person I was. I thought I knew you were a good person, too. It just turns out you have a heart of stone. You're one cold customer, too, you know that? It doesn't take a crystal ball to know that, either. You know why? You know why I gave up on you? Do you want to know why? What are you talking about? Your own family booed me in. First, Holden starts talking about how secretive I've been. Is that ringing any bells? And then your mother, Big Lou, comes back from Paris with these knockout earrings for me. For you. And she's apologized. She's just falling all over herself. I'm so sorry, Lily. I know you hate presents. You hate presents? What is the matter with you? You're so bored in your own life, you can't appreciate a little generosity from your own mother? You should be kissing her big feet for everything that she's done for you. You're a spoiled brat, Lily Snyder. You know, if you can treat your family like that, your kids and your husband, I could believe that you could leave a five-word message on an answering machine. I was trying to protect them from that. No, no, you're twisting this all around to make it look good for you. But it's only good for you. And Holden. He was happier with me than he ever was with you. You don't know that. Oh, yeah, I do. Because Holden told me. Holden never said that. You're lying. You're lying because you want him for yourself. Of course I want him. He's the most amazing man that I've ever met in my life. 
If you took all the best parts of all the guys that I've dated in my life and you lumped them together, they still wouldn't measure up to a guy like Holden. Who wouldn't want him? Except for Brad like you. Of course I want him. He's my husband. Oh, yeah? Well, then what was all that? Well, what? Not there. When Holden got mad, he got all mad. He was talking about your feelings for Simon. Let's be honest. It started way back when. That's why I wasn't surprised when Celia showed up and told me to forget about my diamond because Simon and Lily were using it to live the good life on their little tropical paradise. I didn't even know Holden that well then. But I didn't have the heart to tell him. Oh, that's big of you. Leaving us there, stranded on a deserted island with nothing but scrub pine and poisonous berry. I would have done anything, anything to get home. Are you for real? Rose, I almost died. I almost starved. It was complete torture. The only thing that kept me alive was knowing that Holden was coming to look for me, but he wasn't. He was too busy romancing you already, and I got proof of that one day. With pictures. Pictures? Celia took lots and lots of candid shots. You with my children. You with my husband and the best, best ones of all of you and Holden making out at the Mona Lisa. Oh, got a hand of that Celia. She really gets around, doesn't she? She sure got the goods on you. Big deal. Your own husband has the goods on you. You heard him. You heard how upset he was about you and Simon being joined at the hip or wherever. It's not what you think. Who cares what I think? It's your husband that you should be worried about. My husband saw something that he completely misunderstood. Yeah, that's what all the cheating wives say. There's only one liar and cheater in this room, and it's you. You lied your way right into my bed. And Holden liked it. He liked it a lot. You're sick. Truth hurts, huh? The truth. Whatever it is, and whatever happened, Holden loves me. Not since he had me. He told me he never had it so good. I've learned how to throw right hooks since the last time I saw you. Uh, I've learned a lot of things that I never wanted to know. There's one thing that you haven't told me. Where did you lose the diamond? Is it somewhere that we could find it? It's at the bottom of the ocean, Rose. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Some mermaid's probably wearing it by now. Well, she'd have to get it out of Celia's death grip first. Celia took it? She took it. And then she took our raft. But she never made it past the killer reefs. We watched her drown. Thank goodness that she did steal the raft, because if she hadn't, we'd be where she is right now. Yeah, with my diamond. You know, I had that thing my whole life, and I just thought it was a hunk of junk. It was a pretty hunk of junk. And I liked it because it was the only thing I had for my mom. And here you come into my life and you tell me it's the real thing. And I thought maybe my ancestors are looking down at me to take care of me, but no dice from you. Not even an apology. All the time we've been here, you've never apologized about what happened with Holden. He means more to me than any diamond. Boo hoo. You have no idea what you've done, do you? Holden and I aren't even speaking. Oh God, I hate you, Rose D'Angelo. I hate you back, Lily Snyder. I've got to get out of here. Me too. But first. What? Maybe you don't care if you look like death, but I do. All right? Hey. Is this mine? No, I bought it for myself at the airport before they arrested me. Thanks. Don't mention it. You all right, baby? Fine. Where's Simon? Uh... He's gone. The, uh, the Canadians accepted the money, they dropped the charges, and all you have to do is sign something or other. I can't believe that he left without Honey, saying anything. I told him to get out of here. What? You did what? We ruined our lives. I couldn't stomach looking at the guy anymore. Where did he go? Hopefully, very far away if he knows what's good for him. But I wanted to say something to him before he left. What did you want to do? Did you want to relive old times? Months of hell wasn't hey, enough hey, for you? Hey, hey, hey. Take her home. For heaven's sake, take her home. It's been a long day. You had no right to do that. 
can't be going after that guy. Well, she is. You know, I don't know what she sees in that guy. I really don't. And I would, I would never treat you like that, Holden. You want to go back in the slammer? Hey, you said him was a great guy. If Billy doesn't want him, then I do. Oh, you don't. You don't pull your punches, do you? Even when you're beaten. So what? You gonna put me back in the slammer or what? I got a proposition for you. <laughs> yeah, Rosie, here's a C note. Get out of town. No. You even think about getting out of town, and you are back in the slammer. So what's your proposition? You want to come home with me? I get it. You keep your friends close and your enemies closer, right? Hey, am I your enemy? What are you going to do with me? You're going to lock me in a dungeon in your house? I got the Angelos all over the place. They'll come looking no, for me. No, it's quite comfortable and you're going to be my guest. What's your angle? I've grown accustomed to your face. Yes, I need to peruse it further. I need to see it in close up. <sighs> What's in it for me? You get a safe place to stay until your legal difficulties are resolved. What about Holden? What about him? Is he going to come live at your house, too? Because look at him. He's not going to go home anytime soon. Take it easy. It's all timing, Rose. Take it easy. <laughs> Darling, can I give you a lift home? <laughs> no, I, I? I don't think so. I, I'm not ready to... Go home, I see, I told okay. you that. That's what I said. Let's go. Let's go. Now, come on. Look, if you ever want to talk or anything. Hey, come on. Let's go. Call me, all right? So glad to see you. I didn't think I'd see you before I went. Please don't go. Hello, is anybody around? Oh, forgive me. No doubt you expected me sooner, but once I started filling my basket, I was like a little boy in a toy store. <laughs> uh, and you'll be pleased to know that I got everything on your list. My list? Oh, I'm sorry. Our list. I'm still getting used to your generous uh, spirit. Um, the snack aisle was brimming with goodies. I must confess, I, I did sample a few. I think that's very kind of you, but I think you misunderstood. Matthew, why would I want all this junk? Hey, back off, hon. I asked Matt to buy me all that junk. I never knew it would be such a blast to have a butler. You've got to be kidding me. After everything that you've done to my family, you have the nerve to come into this house and try to pass yourself off as me? And trick poor Matthew? <laughs> no. Matt knows who I am. And I've gotten to know him pretty well, too, since I've been crashing here. Right, Matt? Crashing? What are you talking about? It's true, Mrs. Snyder. Miss D'Angelo is the guest here. <laughs> no. Not if I have anything to say about it. Matthew, what were you thinking? Letting a con artist like this talk her way into my mother's house? I'm afraid you don't understand. Miss Walsh insisted Miss D'Angelo stay here. She was very clear about it. Why would she do that? Because I needed a place to stay, and your mother's got like a dozen extra rooms. I guess the generous gene skips a generation. This doesn't make any sense. Why would my mother want you here? Because I'm a barrel of laughs. All right, all right. She wanted to keep an eye on me. But hey, if I got to be under house arrest, what better house to be in, right, Matt? I got a beautiful room, nice view, and that tub in my private bathroom, big enough for me and the Knicks starting five. I want you out. Now, is that fair, Lou, huh? Asking Matt to disobey a direct order? You would want to mm, cost him his job, would you? Now, if you don't mind, I gotta help Matt unpack the groceries. Oh, you don't want to do that, I... Oh, no, 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 no. I'm like some princesses around here. I don't like anybody to do my dirty work. Hey, how did you know I like beer nuts? Oh, lucky guess. We're gonna eat those when I teach you how to play poker. Yeah, I'm gonna teach Matt how to play poker. He's gonna teach me how to play cricket. What do you think of that? I think we need to speak alone. <coughs> You gonna hit me again? Don't tempt me. Mm. Shaking in my boots. You should be. You tried to trick my friends. Fool my family. You even managed to seduce my husband. I'm telling you one thing. I am back in town. And I'm not going to let you horn in on any part of my life. 
Including my mother. Tough talk, Will. But this isn't about what you want. And the sooner you start accepting that, the better. I don't care who you've conned into taking your side. I will never forgive you. I will never like you. And I will never allow you anywhere near my family. So you take your chips and your wine coolers and your bad attitude and you get out. I gotta tell Matt next time, not Joe's. You're a piece of work. Oh, forgive me. Would you like some? First you pretend to be me. And when that act fails, you just pick yourself up, you dust yourself off, and there you go. You're the lovable lunatic Rose D'Angelo. How long did it take you to perfect this act? What is it with you, huh? You don't like me when I'm being you. You don't like me when I'm being me. What do you want from me? I want you to stop using the people that I care about. Including my mother. I know it drives you nuts that anybody in this town would even want to talk to me. But I'm telling you the truth. I did not worm my way into Ms. Walsh's house. She asked me to come here. That's your version of the story. You want to hear mine? When your plan to steal Holden went south, you decided, hey, if I can't have the guy, I'll still take the cash. Then you went after my mother. New game, same price. It's a very interesting theory, Sherlock, but there's only one problem with that. When have you known Lucinda Walsh to do something that she didn't want to do? They have not created a monster big enough to manipulate that broad. But you are manipulating her, Rose. You're playing on her soft side. You're pretending to be the victim, and it's going to stop. As soon as my mother comes home, I'm letting her in on the real Rose D'Angelo, and you're going to be booted out of this house and out of town. That's funny that you bring up the real Rose D'Angelo. I'm getting the first taste of the real Lily Snyder right now. Oh, behind that soft voice and those Gentile manners. I think you mean genteel. Underneath all of that, you're heartless. You're mean. You're only out for yourself. I should have known. You come stomping around my turf telling me you're going to help me find some diamond. You found that diamond because of me. And I lost it because of you. You and your Aussie boy toy and his crazy sister, the only link that I ever had to my past, gone forever. <gasps> oh, please. If you're going to cry about the diamond, at least be honest about why you care. All right. I admit it. You spend your life kicking up your heels for drunken losers. You're hoping one time you're going to hit it big. And I did. <gasps> but you, you blew it for me. You won't even admit how much you owe me. I don't know you a thing. Whatever I have done to you, you more than made up for it by stealing my husband. My children. My entire life. No, no, husband. Period. Can't get that picture out of your head, can you? Me and Holden. Him not knowing the difference between the two of us in the dark. Or the light. You're so big on honesty. Come on. Let's hear it. Admit it how much you hate me. Oh, I admit it. I hate you. I hate you as much as I've ever hated anybody in my life. Maybe more. And I want everybody to know, everybody that you duped into believing that you were me, I want them to know the monster that you really are. I want you to suffer the way that you've made me suffer. And I want you out of my life, out of my sight, for good. Is that honest enough for you? Yeah. Thanks for sharing your wish list with me. But don't try to bring me down, because thanks to your ma, I am living in the lap of luxury. And no one, and I mean no one, is ever going to take that away from me. We'll see about that. Oh! Ah! Get off of me! I'll get off if you get out! Oh, no! Get up. No! No! Stop it! Lily, stop it! Get off the road! Stop! What are you two doing? She said that you asked her to move in here, is that true? Dear, I asked her to come and stay a while. Oh, that's it. The world has officially turned upside down. Lily, you've got to calm no, down. You, you don't understand what's going on here. You, 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 what about people? How could you do that? How could you ask her to stay here, walk around town and gloat and make a complete fool out of me? You don't need me for that. You're doing a perfectly good job yourself. Please, the two of you, you've got to learn to tolerate each other. You have to get along. Why? Why would I want a human being like this anywhere in my life? Because, dear... She's your sister. Sisters? Is this a joke? If it is, I ain't laughing. There's nothing funny about this, darling. I promise you that. We just got back from New Jersey, and we, we have proof. Whatever it is, I'm not interested. 
Dear, this is very disturbing, and I know that. Please hear us out. You can explain from now until the end of time. There's no way that I would ever believe that a piece of garbage is my sister. I wouldn't lie about this. I'm not talking about lying. I'm talking about hallucinating. I've, uh... I've, uh... If Rose is my sister, that means that you're... Mother? I know it's a shock. Forgive me for breaking up this little reunion. But are you going to tell me that all this time you knew that I had a twin and you failed to mention it? I I would have told you, but I, I didn't know. You didn't know? You didn't know? You didn't know that you had another baby? Oh, of course. That explains it happens every day. Dear, come on. When you know the... the circumstances surrounding everything, you'll understand. Wait, none of this makes any sense. Hey, you told me you went to talk to my dad. Joe, D'Angelo. Yes, Rose, I did. Well, if he told you that I wasn't his daughter, then he's lying. It wasn't just him. It's been corroborated by others. Well, they're lying. They're all lying. Come on, why would this happen? I want to know why somebody's messing with my head. Oh, now I understand. Look at her. This, this is what she wants. Don't you see how she how broken up she is? Whatever you found out in New Jersey, Rose is the one behind. Mother, mom, she wants your money. Unfortunately, my darling Lily, it's not as simple th as that. It's not about money. No, wait, wait. I want to hear how I pulled this off. I must be brilliant. I must be a freaking genius. No, you're just a freaking crook. Say it again. Say it again. Come on, closer this time and I'll bust your teeth out. You stop right there. I am not going to have a wrestling match on my library rug. Now, I, I'm staying here with Rose, and we're having a conversation, and Ivor, you take Lily into the foyer. Lily? Darling, please, please, this is difficult stuff. Don't make it harder. Miss Walsh, I don't know. I, I don't know what to tell you, but you're barking up the wrong tree. I know where I come from. Rose, dear, you need to know the truth. True. You got to think about who you're talking about here. The woman you're calling a liar. My ma. Oh, I, I didn't mean that. I never meant to imply for not even for a second that Mrs. D'Angelo was intentionally lying. Good, because she would never do that. She gets extra money at the grocery store, she went right back. She made things right. She never lied about her age, her health, nothing. Why would she lie to me about being my mom? Well, as I understand the situation, it wasn't that she was lying. It was just that she didn't know. She didn't know. She thought she gave birth to you, but she didn't. You don't know the woman you're talking about. You didn't have the... You didn't have the opportunity to meet her. She's, she was amazing. But you knew her. Dear, you told me when we were talking. I asked you, I was quizzing you about the, when you were born. And you said you didn't know too much about it because your mother didn't talk about it. Well, it's got to be talked about today. All right. All right, let's, let's talk about it. Obviously, you have an uncanny resemblance to my daughter, Lily. Uh, you have used that and manipulated us, but never mind. I had to find out. I had to look into this, so I went to New Jersey, and I talked to the man who you have always thought was your father. And what did Joe have to say? He told me the whole story. He told me everything. Uh, they wanted lots of kids, and they were finally... His wife got pregnant, and they were just ecstatic. She wanted a baby real bad. She told me that, my mom. She didn't lie about that. No, she didn't lie about that. And I don't think she ever really lied about anything. It's just that she didn't really know her baby was still born. No. No, no, that can't be. Don't let Rose trick you into believing her crazy story. Sweetheart, I, sweetheart, this isn't some story that she has concocted. 
How do you know that? Because she had no idea that Lucinda and I were looking into her past. That's right, like she had no idea that she was going to steal my husband either. Oh. Lily. Lily Rose hurt you, I understand that. But in this case, she's not the bad guy, she's the victim. She wants you to believe that, Iva. Do you think that I really wanted to believe it? How horrible and how painful is that? But Lucinda kept finding new pieces of this puzzle, and after a while, I had to consider the possibility that I might have another child out there, a child that I never knew about. Oh, you keep saying that. How could you not know? How could you not know? I asked Lucinda the same question, and we went to New Jersey, and I found the truth. And what did you find out that you didn't know before? Five minutes before you were born. I gave birth to a baby, a baby I never held, a baby I never saw, a little girl, Lily. It was your sister, Rose. Lucinda found the nurse that was with me that night. She's a nun now. Her name is Sister Mary Catherine, and she told me what really happened that night. Don't you remember? No, I don't. Only parts of it. I remember you being born, and... But before that, it's it's a blur. I don't remember. And I always thought that it was because I, I, I tried to block it out. But she told me that they gave me drugs so I would be out of it. So I had no idea what was going on. Like the fact that you were carrying two children. Lily. Lily, I was poor. I, I had no prenatal care, so if there were any signs that there were two babies, I, I didn't recognize them. If you're trying to convince me it's not oh, working. Lily, please, please, Lily, please, but I want you to explain something to me. If there were twins, why? Why were we separated? They never do that. If there was a child born before because me, she why was did they sick. Do? She was sick when she was born. She was very weak, and they thought that she was going to die. My then-husband's lawyer, awful guy, awful guy, he said he could find us a healthy baby. And he was determined to deliver, if you'll pardon the expression. Anyway, so he's there, and, and he looked at you, and you're struggling for breath, and he said, no, no, this is unacceptable, and the deal's off. What? No offense, Miss Walsh, but you're nuts. Come on, look at me, sickly. I'm the, the picture of health. Come on, look at me. We were talking about the day of your birth, Rose. I, I've seen pictures of myself when I was a little a baby in diapers. I was as strong as an ox. I was the kid who was kicking sand in the other kids' faces. I have no doubt that you were queen of the sandbox. But those strengths were acquired because of the love that you were given later on. By who? My, my fairy godmother? That's enough, all right? Now you listen to me and let me finish. And then you'll understand. So the lawyer... <sighs> The lawyer's looking at the baby. The baby is no good. He's going to go back. It's unacceptable. The deal's off. And then Iva, the lady who you just met, who's in the foyer, goes into labor again, and she's got another baby. And that is Lily, your sister. I, I was a teenager, Lily. I had, I had no money, and I had nothing. And I had just given birth to a, a, a baby that wasn't going to live through the night. And this woman took the baby. She took the baby, she kept it a secret, and, and she nursed her back to health in Chicago. Then how did Rose end up in New Jersey with the D'Angelos? Because this woman felt so guilty about her part in this illegal adoption ring that she wanted to start a new life. And she took that baby with her. My baby. Like my mom. I look just like her. Everybody says so. Well, I know how you feel, dear. <laughs> yeah, you don't. You don't know how I feel, Miss Walsh. I have two daughters. I have three daughters, actually. My firstborn and then Lily. Lily is my adopted daughter. I love Lily. I love Lily with a wonderful love, like the love that Mrs. D'Angelo must have given you. All right? But we have to deal with the fact that the birth mother is the woman that's out in the foyer, all right? You have to accept that. I had to. I had to deal with that. Oh, 
something nice that Joe said. He said, do you remember it at all when you were little? You used to, used to fantasize you had a sister. Ha 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 ha. I need proof. I need something else. I need something more. Okay. I'll give you what I got. All right? Oh. Here, dear. It isn't much. But it's signed by the doctor who examined you when you were born. It isn't a birth certificate, but it's the best we can do. Two babies. And you never got to hold either one. feel stupid all my life i was proud of my heritage you know i'm a d'angelo <laughs> d'angelo italiano you know yeah. made a mean marinara like my mom <laughs> ever said i walked like my dad like joe you know like i own the streets you think you could teach me how to make marinara i'd like that i bet you learned a lot of things from the d'angelos except for who i was you know, I understand about my mom. I really, I, I do. But Joe, why would he keep a secret like that from me? Hey, that's easy. He loves you. He lied. My whole life. Nothing in my life is real. It's all a lie. dear I think both of you probably feel that you've been kicked in the stomach and uh, I don't expect anything anything from anyone at this moment except I think I will agree with me on this please for all our sakes the fighting must cease because you need each other not not just because you're sisters but because you're twins. And so you're my mom, huh? 